Welcome back, everyone. Irreverend Ellsworth here on a Monday morning. Because a Monday morning is when you need the words of encouragement, isn't it? Not so much Sunday when you got the whole day to yourself. But Monday morning, that's when I need the words of encouragement. Because I've already had to make an unpleasant phone call this morning. I don't like making unpleasant phone calls. Worse, when that unpleasant phone call has to be part of my J-O-B. <sighs> but that's why I'm thinking about a word of encouragement. And the word of encouragement, I sat here and I realized I was doing my meditation. People are like, you meditate? You don't seem like someone who meditates, except to maybe the gods of rock and roll. But I do meditate. And the way I meditate is very simple. It is with one of these. Uh, this is a crochet hook, by the way. Crochet needle if, you, if you're feeling fancy. That's the reason for this right here. We'll get to that in a second. But I want to show you something I've been working on. This is uh, what I call my anger scarves. Or angry scarves. <coughs> Basically the concept is... Uh, Every time I would go to grab a scarf, the first thing I'd do, I'd grab it and I'd curl it over to make a pool noodle. And then I'd wrap this pool noodle around my neck because life is hard. But then I'd wrap it around my neck and I thought, well, my God, if you actually made it in the round, then you don't even have to crush it. You just, bam, warm and cozy. Mm -mm. Now, I've tried this concept uh, also because it looks a lot like an octopus tentacle. I tried this concept with a single strand crocheting, which is a lot of fun. And of course, I don't have any examples in front of me because preparation. But the single strand is not as cool as the multi strand. And if you can see that, it is indeed multiple strands of yarn. Now, arguably, if you look at yarn itself, it is multiple strands. It's strands upon strands upon strands upon strands upon strands. And that's how yarn comes to be. You take these very small fibers and you keep twisting them and, and rubbing them together and kind of guiding them into going one way. And then you keep twisting them and twisting them and braiding them together with other things. So that's what essentially you're doing with this is you're taking the very concept of yarn and you're expanding upon it in uh, what they call a color way that makes it a lot of exciting and fun. Like, the first time I started crocheting, I used solid color, but I was like, oh, solid color is boring. So then I used these uh, variegated, and then the variegated, you add together with five or six other strands, and you start crocheting that way. Again, I'm talking a lot and not doing what I love to do, which is to crochet. So what I'm doing now is I'm working with a pool of seven strands, and these are seven, seven strands, and they each recommend... Uh, five millimeter, six millimeter, which I think is an I hook or a J. Uh, I will put no information in the area below. Just kidding. No, probably not. Probably not at all. So this hat is actually something I'm using for trivia. I do trivia hosting. And I made this hat uh, with basically a flat crochet pattern. And then I used this uh, basket, a basket stitch to do the front, which is fun. So it gives it kind of that shape, kind of like a top hat. And now, because for trivia, my players on the second floor, uh, I don't want them running up and down the stairs and hurting themselves. So I actually wear a hat, and I'm going to have a basket on top. So now I'm going to crochet the basket. So as you can imagine, you saw the hat on me. Now I'm going to crochet uh, basically a bowl on top of this hat. And you're like, man, Sean, that is going to look stupid. And you know what? You're right. It's going to look really stupid. And that, my friends, is going to be amazing. The beautiful thing about crocheting is the beautiful thing about any art is that you can, is the beautiful thing my mom says about funerals and weddings. You can do them any way you want. <laughs> and I was like, hey, mom, uh, what do you want for your funeral? And she's like, hmm, surprise me. I'm like, oh, mom, such a kidder, that one. We're going to do a, a single crochet if you're following along. I don't know. There are much better videos to do for this. But basically, a, a single crochet is uh, you, you, you basically get, go in, loop, come back out, loop some more, 
My brother's like, are you actually doing anything? It just looks like you're shaking your hands. Oh, this guy. I don't know. I'm going to... Oh, I'm already doing a double. That's the problem is once you learn a stitch in crochet, you kind of do it automatically. And you have to force yourself to not do that stitch again. Now, by doing this, every time you put a stitch into something, A, it's going to make it heavier, and B, be conscious of how tight you're making the pattern. Uh, I have actually had made the hats that fit, and I started messing around with the pattern, and I made them so tight that they don't fit. And, of course, it's not like, oh, I made it tight on the last row. No, I made it tight 75 rows ago. Kind of like life. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're like, hey, why... Why is your life so off track? You're like, oh, well, I just messed up a few stitches in that last row. No, I messed up a few stitches when I spent every Wednesday morning sleeping in my calculus class in UMBC. That's the stitch I missed. But hey, you can't change the past, so you got to keep going to the future. That's what you got to do. You can't. You can't look behind you. You got to spend time moving forward. And I guess that maybe that's the impossible encouragement today because you can change the past you know yeah this is a really ugly hat uh <laughs> but it's it's kind of beautiful and it's ugly yeah that's the other thing i've learned about uh, multi-strand crochet that's very philosophical is that if you put enough ugly colors together they look quite beautiful actually they they really kind of have a have a charm to them it's kind of one of those uh, magic spot paintings where you're supposed to stare long enough until you see a picture and you're like, you know, the Impressionists were doing this before all these magic eye pictures. You just put a lot of crap on a canvas and then people stare at it and they go, I see my grandmother. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, because I painted your grandmother. I didn't like your grandmother. But I'm glad you saw her in my painting. In my paintings. <laughs> oh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, oh, Lord, this is going to take a while. But I, I tell you, I uh, used to smoke last year. I uh, sometimes smoke when I'm out. When I'm out. Uh, but tobacco is not good for you, and it <clears throat> shortens my life, and it uh, enacts my asthma, so that's never fun. So I realized that, uh, first of all, in order to avoid tobacco, I still take smoke breaks, but just don't smoke during them. Because you're going outside, it's like little mini hikes. And, uh, yeah, just, 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 it's a thing. Trust me. It'll work. Uh, just go outside, breathe some fresh air. Uh, don't bum a cigarette, even though every smoker will give you a cigarette. Man, they, this is a, this is a way you know that tobacco is not good for you because every time you're around somebody smoking a cigarette, they will definitely give you one. And if they won't, they're, they're enjoying it far too much. You're like, hmm, not, I haven't been smoking long enough. Anywho, go outside, breathe some fresh air. Get up, move around. Circulation is always good. They say sitting is the new smoking. Don't go outside and smoke, though. Uh, the other thing is, is find yourself a hobby. I take this crochet with me everywhere. Like, I have I have about six or seven projects going at all times, and that sounds really neurotic, but it's yarn. It doesn't go stale. And I don't even use fancy yarn. It's not like I'm using cotton or wool where, oh my god, perhaps some animal might make a nest out of it. No, I'm using acrylic. Really cheap, $3 a bucket acrylic Red Heart. I know, here's a, here's a ringing endorsement for Red Heart. Buy Red Heart acrylic. No animal will bother it ever. I mean, you, you go to Walmart, you buy a $3 ball of yarn. You know, you get $6 for the super saver. But uh, the cool thing about that is... Um, you just kind of leave it you know it is it is machine washable you don't want to put it on high heat because it is plastic and it will melt and it will make everyone at the laundromat hate you like the office hates you when you microwave fish but that's cool so we're coming around and we're doing this but i find it is extremely relaxing and uh, i try to crochet everywhere i have to wait Took my mom to the blood lab the other day, pulled out a little crochet, had a little project in my pocket. It was nice. Everybody, oh my goodness, everybody stares at you like you're a wizard. Like, if you pull out a crochet needle, you might as well just pull out a wand and start being like, <laughs> Conversationist expectoramus. 
People are like, oh, I have a grandmother who did that. And you're like, thanks, man. I know, right? Like, yeah, that's how I get all the chicks. <laughs> Actually, a lot of women talk to you when you start crocheting. Because they're like, how do you do that? You know, it's it's a conversation. It is a, it is a conversation guarantee. I was on a subway train in New York City. And uh, I was, I was a, I was a suburban kid lost in the big city. I had no business being there. It was crazy. I think I'm going to go to a half trouble because this single stitch is like slowing my life down. I don't know. Well, I guess I can keep going single stitch. Once you do a double, double crochet, you're like, oh, life is too short for this single crochet jobby. But I guess I'm going for a feel here, so we'll see. I want to make it a really rigid basket. <sighs> Foreshadowing, there's a reason for the basket on top of my hat. The trivia players I have on Wednesday night, come on out. It's awesome every Wednesday night. We uh, play trivia on two floors. So I am on the first floor in the bar area on the right, where a couple of trivia teams sit. And then I run my speakers up to the second floor where uh, some of our other trivia teams sit. And then the trivia teams on the second floor, you know, they got some stairs to navigate. I don't want them to hurt themselves or nothing. So what I do is I put this hat on top of my head and I give them a little bunch of those uh, bubble gum dispenser containers, you know, out of the 50 cent, you know, you put your 50 cents in, you turn it and, chick, 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 and a little toy comes out that ain't worth a nickel. Not worth a penny, actually. I actually put those together at one point. They are horribly, horribly cheap. Like, like the dollar store looks down on bubblegum machines. Like, that's the level of awfulness. Anyway. <clears throat> I give them these little bubblegum containers. They put their answer slips in it. And they try to get it into the basket on top of my head. And then if they do get it to stay in the basket on top of my head... They get a one-point concussion bonus. <laughs> I made myself laugh. They get a one-point concussion bonus for trying to concuss the host. Let me tell you, teams on the first floor walked up to the second floor, wrote nothing on their slip except their team name just to throw something at my head. It was a magical time had by all. And it'll be a magical time had this Wednesday night, I'm sure. So this will be a lot of fun. Yeah, adults really need an excuse to act like children. Like, you know, if you were to walk into a group of uh, adults at 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, at Raymond James and go, hey, all right, guys, listen, what we're going to do is I'm going to pass around this ball of yarn. I want you to throw it to one another and see what kind of fancy pattern you create as you throw it to one another. They would look at you and they would ask you to leave the building. <laughs> Actually, I'm kidding. Nowadays, they would just give you a $1,500 consultation bonus and thank you for the team building exercise. But it used to be that they would look at you like you had, you know, something wrong with you. But children do that all the time. And uh, adults will go out to places and drink and then they will play games. And they'll finally play games uh, when they can allow themselves to after they get drunk enough. I don't know what I'm going on about. I'm really having a fun time crocheting. It doesn't really matter what I say, does it? Normally I crochet silently because, you know, that's how I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right, so it's tightening up. I don't know if you can see this, but it's creating a little bowl on top of my head. So eventually they'll have a little uh, target. So I'll wear this and I'll be like, hey, everybody, go ahead and in my head. That's nice. Got a nice ridge there. Nice effect. <laughs> this is kind of nice. Like, like these are really, like, if you could see the, the, uh, the individual yarns. How nice. Anyway, it's a very relaxing exercise for me. And uh, hopefully you find it satisfying as well. Let's focus in on the yarn, shall we? Oh, that's good right there. Yeah. <laughs> Turn, turns into an, a yarn ASMR. So what you... I made millions of crochet as ASMR. 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 It sounds like a... Uh, like a the mighty Steve Thor would ride. You, you riding on Esmer this week? Yeah, I'm riding on Esmer this week. It's really tight on this three-dimensional stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. The beautiful thing about crochet is that 
You don't have to follow a pattern if you don't want to. Now, of course, people go, oh, you made a mistake. And we go, did I make a mistake? How's your hat looking? Oh, I didn't make a hat. Oh, you didn't make a hat. Oh, if you didn't make a hat, then uh, how about you go back and make a hat? And then we'll talk after you make a hat. Because <clears throat> my nasty, garish, brightly colored, throw-together top hat monstrosity is a lot cooler than the hat you didn't make. Oh, look at that perfect hat you didn't make. Good job. All right, we're on to the second row. Oh, this will be so much easier to crochet now. I think we're still going to go with second because it's dense. Although we could go with the triple. The triple's pretty dense. Now we'll do a single. We'll do a single and we'll keep going around. Tatner it. Yeah, I think... Uh, I tend to crochet with my feelings. That's why a lot of these stitches are very tight. I mean, they are, uh oh, I did a triple. I'm not even trying to do a triple. You know, huh? A treble stitch is what they call it, where you do a double. So where you go in. Maybe we could turn it. Oh, there we go. You can see the back of it. Oh, snap. Got too close. Got too close. All right. You can see the back of what I'm doing. So I'm just going in here like this, going out here. And like this is, I didn't quite, when you do multi-strand, uh, I read a couple articles online and they were like, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and go up a few sizes. Like if you double the yarn, go up two sizes. Well, what happens when you do seven yarns? Well, then you, I don't, I don't know. This is weird territory. Then they're like, well, if it gets too big, you could just finger crochet it. And I'm like, well, first of all, my finger don't do that at the end. So I can't do that. And then it's like, well, all right. Well, we'll try doing this a little bit. See how the neon's coming out. That's so nice. That bowl looks like Rainbow Bright done. Fell into a wood chipper. Or like I'm, I'm crocheting out of candy. Like that don't even make sense. That's so relaxing. No, I can't encourage you enough. Just try some crocheting. There's some really good tutorials on the YouTubes. There's a, a you know, a couple of really nice tutorials. They get real close in on their hands and everything. And they go slow at first and then they show you how to speed up and everything. And I, I just like doing it because it's so relaxing. Man, I even made an anger scarf the other night. You know, I, I was talking out of my head and it, you should always be careful what words you say you know because I was talking out of my head and my brother was harassing me as he often does he likes to he likes to peg me every now he likes to check the gate every now and then that's all right like every day like all day long <sighs> anyway I'm crocheting up something I'm just trying out a multi-strand my first five strander and uh, he's like, who's that for? And I was like, oh, anyone who wants it. And he goes, I'll take it. I'm like, what? Like, are you serious? Are you, are you like serious right now? You, you're you seriously going to take my girl? You're going to take my crochet? Like, you just walked in and like laid claim to it, you know? And, 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 I, and we're big, we're big people about our word. Man, I did not. I was like halfway done. I'm like, you know what? Here, take, take what I've done. Here you go. He's like, I want it finished. I'm like, I don't even know where I am right now. You know what I did? I sat down and I crocheted my brother an angry scarf. There's like a lesson. Like, like that sounds like a Bible lesson. Like, I so I crocheted an angry scarf is what I did. My words done wrote a chick that my body had to cash. And I tell you, I crocheted that thing for like five hours. And you know what? I enjoyed every moment of it, even angry. I mean, angry. I was enjoying the crocheting. All right, now here's a common dilemma. We have run short on one of our uh, of our yarns, um, and I don't really have any backup yarn of this size. Now I can stop my project, or I can just keep going. I don't know. So so far we got a little basket. It's not huge. Now see, the other thing is, is it, it's it's kind of stiff. That's not bad. It gets a little bit of a bowl. I mean, 
mean, I could go up a couple more rows. Now, I'm running out of one color, though, but I can continue with six strands. I'm sure that'll be still good enough. The other thing is I can go around again with these and make it a little stiffer. But anyway, that's going to be my hat. So that's it in a nutshell. I sure hope you've enjoyed this here. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is amazing. Yeah. I'm going to have little answer slips in my head tonight. Hey, good time with the concussion bonus. But yeah, come on. Check out trivia. I'm uh, out at the Dogfish Head Ale House every Wednesday night in Gaithersburg. I'm in uh, Montgomery County, Germantown on Thursday nights at Gumbo Yaya. Friday nights, I am at PJ's in Germantown. Saturday nights, Chili's. At, uh, in Pikesville, and Monday nights I am in Reynolds, 1747, down in Annapolis. So come on out and have fun with trivia. We have a good time, and sometimes we get a little rowdy. But uh, hopefully this has been an uh, encouraging word to you this Monday morning. I know it's been therapeutic for me. I'll talk to you soon.